Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here with some more geography now. And I got a special guest with me. Hi. <laughs> this is Destiny. I am. Uh, yeah, she's going to. Oh. Kind of over here in the corner today. He's existing. <laughs> you want to call it that? No, <laughs> <laughs> But you're doing Australia states and territories. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! Uh, I've done the the regular geography now, Australia, but this is uh, well, the, the extras they have for certain countries. They kind of get in depth, I guess, at the certain regions or whatnot. Okay. Uh, so uh, we're kind of going to go from, I guess, province to province. I think Australia has provinces, right? Um, it's not states, right? I think I'm so. But, the person you should be asking. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> This is definitely new to her. It's the first time she's ever watched this kind of really video, so it's be interesting. All right. Let's get to it. Before you do, please hit that like and subscribe button. I appreciate it. And we'll get to it. Bam. Hey, everybody. So this is going to be a special extra bonus video for you. Heavily requested the states and territories of Australia. Before we start, though, as you guys know, I'm saving up money to buy flight tickets to visit you guys for the next geographies. We got some great submissions from you guys on four continents. There was a guy from Somaliland, Kazakhstan, a girl from Italy. So obviously, one way that I make money is to do sponsored videos. As you guys know, I'm kind of selective with the brands that I choose to work with. No okay. more video games. Now I only work with education and geography based brands, and I'm happy to announce you've probably heard of them. The good people at Skillshare have reached out and decided to sponsor this video. Skillshare is a website where you can How long learn is this skills. Pretty simple. There are over 25,000 classes you can take in all fields of expertise and academia. And my personal favorite segment. Sorry, Skillshare. Okay, you guys rock. All right. So finally, <laughs> let's talk Australia. I love Aussies. They're like one of the only few people in the world that can out crazy Americans. Now, we kind of already explained this in the Australia video, but let's just kind of recap. Australia is basically divided into six states and 10 federal it's territories, stories. three okay. of which are internal and seven of which are external outlying island territories. So I talked to a lot of you guys, the Aussie subscribers, you helped me write this script and gave me information. So I'm going to kind of just report back what a lot of you guys said and add my research. So here we go. New South Wales, capital Sydney. This is the most populous state at about 7 million, a little less than a third of all Australians live in this one state. And the capital Sydney alone holds about two thirds of the entire state's population. Basically, even though this was not the first mm -hmm. place that was anytime i think of australia that's the view i always think about is, yeah. is that like it's like amphitheater or something i uh, some kind is that kind of some kind of theater maybe you guys can let me know in the comments but like this view this picture right here is like when someone like says australia that's kind of one of the first things that come to mind plus i guess kangaroos and and uh is it crocodile dundee <laughs> isn't crocodile dundee australian good eye mike yeah i think so <laughs> right and that ain't a knife. This is a knife. Anyways. That's not a knife. This is a knife. <laughs> uh, so holds about two-thirds of the entire state's pop. Steve Irwin, yeah. The the great late Steve Irwin. Yeah, he was Australian. But anyways, yeah. Live in this one state. And the capital, Sydney, alone holds about two-thirds of the entire state's population. Basically, even though this was not the first place that was discovered in Australia by Europeans, it's kind of like the first place where the British started colonizing. You know this place. It has all the touristy spots. It's super diverse. You'll find a lot of Greeks and Asians and Maltese even and South Africans. Oh, and don't forget Lord Howe Island belongs to them. In the south, it's also home to the highest peak on the mainland, Kosciuszko, and it's also the source of the longest river in the country. Country, the Murray. Uh, according to geography Brad, New South Welshmen love to gamble and it's kind of like a problem. Like half of all the bars and clubs have slot machines. In general, mm. New South Wales is kind of like the core nucleus business hub. It's like the uppity metropolitan part. I don't think it's a bad thing, right? You do it in moderation. Oh, well, anything in moderation is okay, but like to have, they, he just said it's a Problem. Oh, okay. a, gambling, a gambling problem is a big okay. problem. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So yeah, if you're like spending like your rent, you know, yeah. on gambling, and I guess yeah, people are homeless and starving and spending their money hoping to get rich. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> over my head. 
part of Australia. Also, uh, Hugh Jackman and ACDC are from here. Queensland, capital mm. Brisbane. Uh, I was told sometimes the people here are called banana benders because it's like home of Australia's banana industry. This Dutch dude landed in Cape York somewhere, you know, that horn of Australia. Uh, according to Geography Max, it's where the rainforest meets the reef. And it's basically like the playground of Australia, kind of like the Florida, Orlando, you know. They got amazing beaches. They got the world famous Great Barrier Reef, great snorkeling. Just be careful though, because on some of the beaches, you can find box jellyfish, which could kill you in minutes. On top of that, they yeah, got a ton of really theme like parks, and uh, it even has the tallest building in all of Australia and the Southern Hemisphere, Q1. Southern Australia, the festival state. Capital Adelaide. Uh, a lot of you guys said this. It's kind of famous for being that place where the guy murdered people and hid body parts in barrels. And the people here eat crows, which is why their AFL team <laughs> is the crows. That's what you guys said. I don't... <laughs> You guys eat crows. So yeah, that's a great mess. Why are you stuck on that? I'm stuck on the barrel murderer. <laughs> So what? How did eating crows trump the barrel murderer? I don't know. I don't know. I gotta know more about this barrel murderer. <laughs> that's my niche. <laughs> Which is why their AFL team is the crows. That's what you guys said. I don't... Okay. No, but seriously, Adelaide is sometimes called Radelaide. It was voted one of the safest and livable cities in not only just Australia, but the world. Apparently, I was told the best wine also comes from South Australia, mostly grown in the Barossa and Clare Valley. It's also known for having like all those salt flats and dry lake beds. Mining is huge out here, especially in Opal. And speaking of which, it's also home to Cooper Petty, the underground city. Cool. Tasmania, colloquially okay, known as Tassie, right, capital yeah. Hobart. This is the only island Tasmania? state out of all the no, states, no. and it's made up of like one big island and like 300. Well, yeah, he, he was. Like, I, I was like, ah, oh, mining, okay, that's fine, but dangerous. And then they showed me the stones, and you didn't see my face. Everybody yeah. else did. <laughs> I was just like, it's like, okay, yeah, that's a place I would go. Yeah, sorry, I would have paused you, but like, I cannot, we can't see each other at all when I record this. No. So, it's like, I can't see her, her reaction. Well, is. like, I was kind of turned off by the whole, like, salt, flat, dry lake bed thing, because you know me, I'm, yeah. like, all about my water, but, um, they, uh, the, the, the opal mining thing got me. Um, Those are pretty cool stones. Oh, yeah. I know she, she's all into the, the whole spiritual kind of thing, so I can I, definitely... I think you guys probably can't see it, but I have a, a stone colorite on my boot that I carry around with me now. I just gave that to her, too. <laughs> <laughs> right? All right. Uh, where are we? All right, we're, oh, yeah. This is the only <laughs> island state out of all the states, and it's made up of like one big island and like 300 smaller islands. I was told Tasmania is kind of like the butt of all the jokes for Australians. They kind of treat it as if it's like the West Virginia of Australia. <laughs> According to Geography Kelly, the people are basically apple eating bogans and two headed mutants. The word bogan meaning something <laughs> like hillbillies. No, but that's the joke. But in all seriousness, Tasmania is actually a very beautiful place. It's known for its very unique flora and fauna. Of course, you guys all know that they're famous for having the Tasmanian devil, the largest carnivorous marsupial in the world. So it used to be the Tasmanian tiger, but they went extinct in the 30s. Sad. I was told they're really nice people though, and apparently they make really good cheese and whiskey. Well, I'm down for that. Victoria, the garden state. Capital, Melbourne, not Melbourne. It is the second most populous state after New South. I'm guilty of that. I call it Melbourne all the time. Sydney, Sydney and Melbourne. Me Wait, what was it called again? Melbin? Melbin. Melbin? Yeah. Well, I didn't know that before now. Melbourne, right? That's what it looks like. It looks like. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so trying to offend nobody in Australia. <laughs> right, Melbin, okay. Melbin, not Melbourne. Melbourne. It is the second most populous that. state after New yeah. South Wales, and it is the most densely populated state. It was famous for a gold rush in the 1850s, and it was also famous for the Eureka Stockade. It was like the only armed conflict and fight against the British during colonial times. The biggest thing you guys told me is that this is kind of like the arch nemesis of New South Wales. These people fight with New South Wales on like everything. Cricket, AFL, rugby, even dancing 
like they invented the Melbourne shuffle. Even architecture. To this day, Melbourne actually has more skyscrapers than Sydney, and they hold the second, third, fourth, and fifth tallest buildings in the country. It's like they didn't even want to give Sydney a chance. Uh, basically in the capital, Melbourne, there's like two different types of people. There's like the hardcore sports fanatics, or the hipsters. They have a huge cafe culture and like artsy scene with like live music. Otherwise, they also have uh, the 12 Apostles, Phillip Island where you can see penguins. But yeah, basically you get kind of like this artsy coffee drinking but highly competitive state in Australia. Western Australia. I could totally see us going there and I'm like going back because I'm like obviously a sports kind of person yeah, and you're and you're more of the hippier are, kind of person. Totally artsy. So yeah, we would definitely be spotted <laughs> in both scenes. Whatever. <laughs> That's funny. Capital Perth. It is the largest state area wise. It basically just takes up the entire western third of Australia. And it's actually the second largest country subdivision in the world after the Saha Republic in Russia. About 92% of the population lives just in this little southwest corner where the green vegetation is. And out of that group, about 79% of whom live in the Perth metropolitan area. They are the second largest iron ore producer in the world. About 46% of all Australian exports actually come from this state alone. Geography Keith, not our Keith. Keith, a different Keith, said, uh, the people here are cashed up bogans. It's kind of like those, you know, rich <laughs> Texan oil prospectors, you know? It was also the site of the famous Emu War, where Australians fought against emus and lost. Oh, and also a whole too famous bubble gum <laughs> It is totally true. I've done a video on this war. The Emu War is pretty hilarious. And they oh, lost. Man, I'm gonna have to watch that one, man. Because, uh, that's, that's great. <laughs> The emu war. <laughs> it's been a while since I see if I remember the. I'm tell I bet those things are vicious though. I mean, okay, the Royal Australian <laughs> Artillery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Those things are pretty vicious. <laughs> Where Australians fought against emus and lost. When also home to famous <laughs> bubblegum pink Lake Hillier. It's also home to That's the Kimberley awesome. region, one of the most geologically fascinating regions in all of Australia. Rottness Island, where you can see those quokkas, the smiling animal. And uh, yeah, just really <laughs> underrated. I say check it out, why not? And now we reach the territories. The Australian Capital Territory, otherwise known as ACT, capital of this territory and the entire country, Canberra. I will never forgive myself for getting it totally wrong in the Australia video, it was so embarrassing. But hey, I'm redeeming myself right now, Canberra. In a nutshell, Canberra was built because it was kind of like the middle point between Melbourne and Sydney so that neither could be the capital and they were just like, let's find a neutral ground, even though geographically it's a little closer to Sydney. The territory is small, only encompassing about 2,300 square kilometers. It's basically where you see all the government buildings, the parliament building, which actually looks pretty cool. A lot of you guys said the same thing for some reason. It is known for having lots of roundabouts, people who can't build front fences on their property, legal fireworks, and legal pornography I, I don't even know what to say to that I mean that a lot of That's you guys cool. wrote that so I guess I just have to report what you said I mean they also have a zoo aquarium the National Gallery is here with a lot of cool indigenous Aboriginal art for some reason they have a glassworks shop and you can like hunt for truffles with dogs okay what? sure Jervis or Jarvis Bay yeah, territory exactly. many people don't even really see this as like a separate territory because it's kind of like it works with the capital as the story goes after Canberra was built they were kind of like oh crap maybe we should have done this on the coast so that we could have access to the ocean so in 1915, New South Wales was like, okay, you can have this little peninsula. So then they took it, but then it kind of <laughs> sucked because the port didn't really function that well. And like the train leading up to it couldn't hold heavy freight cargo going up the hill. And now it's just home to like a Navy base with like 400 people. So wow. it actually cooperates with the capital legislatively, but it actually is its own separate territory. I mean, it's super small, but you can still actually do some things here. Like there's uh, whale watching, there's some shops and restaurants. But yeah, that's just about it. Small little territory. The Northern Territory capital Darwin. Now this is basically the place that Australians are referring to when they say the outback. It is the gateway to all that interior crazy Australian stuff that you see in all the movies and TV shows and magazines. Obviously it's home to the most famous natural landmark Uluru or Ayers Rock. There's a lot of other cool natural sites too like the Mataranka Thermal Pools. And even though it doesn't have the highest population of indigenous Australians, it has the highest population per capita. Somewhere around 10%. And now the external offshore island territories. Ash more and Cartier. It's basically a bunch of empty sandbanks and sand islands and coral reefs in the middle of the ocean. In 1974, Australia signed the Memorandum of Understanding. It kind of allows Indonesian fishers to go around the area and fish and go to the islands for shelter and visit graves. I'm just curious, in the comments below, does anyone live on those little islands? Is there like, you know, just one little house That's out there? Kind of, you know, because that, that one little island they show, where is it at? Indonesian fishers. Oh, hold on. 
right there. Like this one looks like you can have like a little house on there I would and set the house dead in the middle of all of those yeah, trees so right. nobody could ever find it. And then like you just have like a jet ski that you drag out in there to I don't know if you gotta go somewhere. It would have to suck during like a storm season or oh, something. Yeah. I make sure I yeah, I'm sure if you had like a big storm, like water might wash I guess you right over your, it. Yeah. Right wash your house away. So maybe that's why people Yeah. yeah I don't know. But let us know in the comments, yeah. In 1974, Australia signed the Memorandum of Understanding. It kind of allows Indonesian fishers to go around the area and fish and go to the islands for shelter and visit grave sites. It is a marine mm. park. However, it also kind of acts, unfortunately, as like a place for human smuggling. And the government has been kind of monitoring this area for a while. The Australian Antarctic Territory. Oh, okay, I mean, no, technically no capital, but the only place of residency would be Davis. <laughs> right? Do you feel bad now? <laughs> we were like 10 seconds off from like not going for <laughs> that. Nope. Lives there because apparently the parties uh parties some illegal shit. And that was a roller coaster. <laughs> wow. And we're at okay, the Antarctica territory. Australian oh, Antarctic Territory. I mean, technically no capital, but the only place of residency would be Davis Station. And it's actually the largest territorial claim on Antarctica by any nation. Uh, and yeah, basically, you know, uh, research and scientists. Uh, there was some controversy with some illegal Japanese whaling ships that passed by the area. I mean, what else can I say? I mean, it's, it's Antarctica. You know, you know what it is. Christmas Island, capital Flying Fish Cove. I actually did a video on this a while ago. Check it out if you want. It's a fascinating island. There's only about 2,000 people, but it's very diverse. Every year, the island experiences a huge crab migration. They even built barricades and like wow. a bridge that they crab can use crosses. so they don't get crushed by cars. They are also known for having a former detention center that held. Sorry, we're, we're uh, being invaded by aliens. No, we have a have an alarm. <laughs> For yeah, medication and, alarms. Medication Sorry. alarms. There you go. Anyways, back to the show. Asylum seekers. But yeah, it's a pretty cool place off the beaten track. The Cocos or Keeling Island, capital West Island. They also go by Pulu Panjang. Cocos referring to all the coconut trees that can be found on the island, and Keeling because it was named after the guy that discovered it. It's made up of 27 coral atolls, only two of which are inhabited. Altogether, there are only about 600 people, mostly Malays. They are descended from the workers that were brought over by this Scottish guy who decided to kind of. He was a merchant. <laughs> he wanted to Ross. develop the islands to for a plantation. The Coral Sea Island. Islands. There is no capital, but the only inhabited island is Willis Island. It only has like four people on a weather station. Wow. Their job is to like monitor four the weather. On Other a weather station. Man, look at that. It's like that'd be boring, dude. Like, I guess... It's a weather station. Imagine living there and yeah, knowing a... something's fixing to hit that island. That's got to be terrifying. Because there's like no trees or like it's basically no a cover. yeah nothing. It's like you get on the roof. Yes. Terrifying. They're gonna be pretty peaceful, though, right? I mean, yeah. If you're only four people, you can just stick one of you in like each corner and leave each other alone. If you really need. I mean, to. if something's going bad, if you have like a boat to send out there, well, you know. But the, they uh, have to. Right. It if down. it's a weather station, it's gotta have like safety to get out of there. <laughs> no, it has a bunker. Bet they got a helicopter, a tiny one. I don't see a helicopter pad unless it's on the. Uh... They don't have to. You don't have to have a helicopter. Well, yeah, it's pretty flat. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty flat there anyway. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. This island, it only has like four people on a weather station. Their job is to like monitor the weather. Other than that though, the only other thing known about this place is mm -hmm. that in 2004, there was like a bunch of protesters that tried to make their own micro nation. It was called the Gay and Lesbian Kingdom of the Coral Sea Islands. Even though it wasn't really much of a serious claim and it was just more of like a political statement, it actually gained... You remember that? I vaguely, vaguely remember that. Okay. <laughs> That's cool though. I like this. This is stuff, all these like little things that they end up bringing up in you. This is what's kind of is cool and cool to find out. Islands, wow. even though it wasn't really much of a serious claim and it was just more of like a political statement, it actually gained a lot of publicity. The Heard and McDonald Islands, completely uninhabited, but Atlas Cove is kind of like the place where people go to camp out and research. Most Aussies learn that this is the only place in Australia where they have active volcanoes. It's actually closer to Africa and Antarctica than it is to Australia. Freezing cold, peaks covered in ice most of the year, and actually Mawson Peak on Heard Island is technically the tallest point in Australia, if you consider it, but... 
but yeah. And speaking of which, Moss and Peak on Hurt Island actually creates this weird vortex shedding effect on the clouds when they pass by. But otherwise, yeah, the only living things on the island would be seals and penguins. You actually need permission from the Australian government to even come here because it's a nature reserve. It would be a real challenge to come here, but well, really cool to nice. document it, don't you think? And finally, Norfolk Island, capital Kingston. This one is interesting. First of all, they are famous for the Norfolk pine, which grows here. It's even on their flag. They export it a lot, especially to mainland Australia for Christmas time. Second, just like many other places in Australia, it started as a penal colony, then it was closed down and abandoned, and then the extra mutineers from Pitcairn Island came over and resettled it. There was like 200 of them. So there's kind of like a link between Norfolk and Pitcairn. Amongst that crew were some Polynesians. They mixed in, and today there's kind of like a weird fusion British slash Polynesian culture. They even speak their own Creole. And yeah, basically the people on the island today are mostly descended from those mutineers. So that's it. That's hmm. all 16 states and territories. However, I do kind of have to mention one more thing. This is probably going to offend some people, but it kind of has to be said. Australia kind of still, in a way, thinks... New Zealand is, like, still theirs? According to Section 6 of the Australia's Constitution Act, what? it says, The states shall mean such of the colonies of New South Wales, New Zealand, Queensland, Tasmania, Victoria, <laughs> Western Australia, and South Australia. And they just kind of left it there. But when Kiwis see this, they're like, Ha! Nope! Good luck, you're on your own. In the end, Australia is pretty much unlike anywhere else on Earth. I mean, can you imagine what the first European colonists must have thought when they landed on this area? They must have thought it was like a completely different planet. Like what, like hopping pouch animals and like <laughs> duck-billed beaver things? It really is unique, landscape-wise and people-wise. Beautiful people, great culture. Thank you for watching this video. I had fun making it. Stay cool, stay tuned. Thank you there. Well, that was definitely uh, pretty interesting, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. definitely yeah. learned a few more things that I didn't know. I, I'm still stuck on the barrel murderer. <laughs> the barrel. I'm still stuck on the barrel murderer. I'm going to have to go look that one up. Yeah, definitely. Like, uh, if you guys know, I guess, a good video for that, like, you can leave a link. Yeah, and, like, please. The comments, like, check that out, and maybe I, I can do a, a quick video on that, you know, and have Destiny uh, oh, join. I'll totally, uh, I'll totally tune in for that one. Like I said, that's my <laughs> I'm all I'm I'm all about the dark and gritty stories that come out of stuff. <laughs> so yeah, definitely. Uh, like, give me us your thoughts of uh, what you think of Australia. What you want to add in, and why uh, some people still think New Zealand is part of Australia <laughs> when it definitely isn't. Right now, probably offended someone just by saying that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, let us know your thoughts below, and hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit the like and subscribe. And let me know if you want to see some more of uh, Destiny here, you know, because, you know, she'll be around. So <laughs> she will when she can. That's not really her cup of tea, but I think with the humor and stuff it enjoys, I think it kind of makes it pretty neat and fun. But anyways, guys, you guys have a great day and we'll catch you guys in future videos. Peace. I am out of here.